Welcome to Cooking with Frenchie, a new Jewish cooking show brought to you by the Roth Family JCC and the Jewish Federation of the Desert. We're incredibly grateful to the Winn-Dixie at Fern Park who provided us with the groceries needed to make these amazing meals. We're so excited to bring you Chef Eric Azule and his masterful creations. Programs such as this only happen because of your generous support. Thank you for all that you do for the Roth Family JCC and the Jewish Federation of the Desert. We look forward to bringing you more informative, interesting, and educational programs throughout the year. Now, get your supplies and your materials ready and prepare to learn how to create these beautiful and delicious dishes. Biteavon. Take us away, Chef Eric. This program is brought to you by the Rose Family JCC of Greater Orlando. We also want to thank Barbara and Bert Chasnoff for letting us use the beautiful kitchen. All this amazing food was donated by the Winn-Dixie of Fern Park. And please, thanks to all the JCC of Florida, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, North and South Miami Beach, and of course, Tampa. Thanks to all of you guys. Hi, I'm Chef Eric, but please call me Frenchie. Everybody else does, and honestly, I am way more comfortable with this. Hi guys, welcome to Cooking with Frenchie. I'm super happy and super excited to have you here today. But first, let me tell you one thing. Cooking should not be a chore. Cooking should be an act of love. From as far as I can remember, cooking was always, always the love language of my family. From my grandparents to my parents, this is how everything started. So please do me a favor, Pour yourself a glass of wine and let's get things started. You know, first, I wanna show you a little bit of the essential that you need to have in your kitchen. Nothing fancy, but just a few knife, a few cooking implement, and a few pots and pan. Let's start with the chopper. Chopper is any, any type of white blade. This is gonna help you cut all your vegetable, slice your meat, apply pressure, you know, to cut some bones. That's something that to me, I couldn't live with. No, this is my favorite. This is the chef knife. I like to have two different ones. One heavier than the other. And with those two, you can basically cut or chop anything that you're gonna come across. No, a little paring knife, something that's gonna be easy, that's gonna be uh, able to come, to come to you, let you cut your vegetable, take the heart off, easy to use, here we are. And finally, you know, this I couldn't live without. Again, basic, but with that, you can peel everything. You can peel everything, it's easy. Well, you know what? No, uh, about we start cooking. I think it's time. I think we're all ready. So let's start with our beef burgundy. Hi guys, well, let's get started. And we're gonna start with a French classic, beef burgundy. This is the ultimate comfort food for me when I speak about it, when I talk about French cuisine. It's a recipe that has been uh, used by many chefs, done by even more, and everybody has his own take on it. This is just going to be my take, and um, you know, 
few basic ingredients carrots onion mushroom most important flavor a bouquet garni this is really easy we're talking laurel bay leaf and thyme but today to help me i'm gonna ask tamar to join me and to be my sous chef today so tamar let's get you in the mood and uh as we will be cooking with wine. Thank you, Chef Eric. You're welcome. Cheers and thank you for being here. Thank you, it's great being here. All right, now, while I'm gonna ask Tamar to go grab me the meat that's waiting for me in the refrigerator, I'm gonna start prepping. Really easy. First, I start by peeling my veggie. While you're doing that, do you need some potatoes? Well, garlic. Oh, we'll get that. We'll get there to. Uh, we'll get there to it in a minute. No. This really important. What's going to bring flavor are all your aromatics. So, garlic, carrots. You know, it's um, this is what is going to is going to bring all your flavor. So why do I smash the garlic instead of peeling it first or dicing it? Smashing it will liberate way more aromas. So it's easy. Doesn't uh, you don't need any type of technique to do it. Just go for it. Just smash. Just smash. You know, it's like you know, be kind of the Hulk in your kitchen. Traditional beef burgundy, cold from bacon. Bacon, yeah, I don't think we're gonna be using this today. So instead, to get the smoky flavor, I'm gonna be using a kosher turkey leg. I'm gonna dice it up, and I'm gonna saute it with my aromatics. And then, we'll add this to the, to the stew when the stew's gonna get, uh, get cranking. That looks like a smoked turkey leg. It is. It is. It really is. Okay. It really is. We want that smokiness. We All want right. we want that earthiness to come to us. So, you know, same thing. I'm going to cut it really thickly. What we want out of this is the flavor. So we're gonna to try to extract as much flavor from that turkey as we can. And then we're gonna get rid of it. This is not something that, that's gonna stay on the, uh, on the pot, but we want to extract all the flavor. So can you also put it in as a whole or do you have to cut it up? There are different take there there are different way to do it. I like to cut it up because it's going to take less time for me to extract the flavor. And um, I want the skin because this is where all the flavor and all the smoke has been concentrating. Also, it's going to give me a little bit of that fat and uh, and there, you know, fat is our friend. <laughs> You know, it's like, I know, it's like, yeah, but still, yeah, fat is our friend. All right. So now, we are ready to get on the stove. So a beef burgundy must have that smoky part to it? Yes. Yes. It's, it's really, really important. That's one of the flavor that you want to have. You want that kind of smokiness. And when we're going to, um, uh, to toast the flour, this is another element that's gonna bring us that smokiness. The, um, the flour by itself, if we use it, it's gonna be at the same time a natural thickener for the sauce, but also by, uh, by the act of just toasting it, we're going to add another layer of flavor. So that's including the skin? That's including the skin, yes. That's including the skin. The skin, again, you know, this is kind of a very lean cut of meat. 
and I'm gonna use very, very low fat, you know, just a little bit of oil to saute all my elements. So this is gonna bring me another layer of flavor and the fat, the turkey fat, is gonna really complement the, uh, the beef really well. Wonderful, that sounds yummy. I hope. <laughs> no, beef, like everything else, doesn't come already seasoned. So, a little salt. A little pepper. Approximately how much uh, meat did you put in there, Frenchie? Uh, approximately uh, three pounds. Three, three, pound? three pound to three and a half pound. So I see and that this, you put some salt in there. How yes. much salt, more or less, would you put for a three pound? This is, I like to, uh, to season slightly, just slightly, especially with salt. I'd rather add salt to my preparation than over salt. You know, salt is always something that you can add to. And you can add salt at any point in your, um, in your cooking. This is called, you know, rectifying your seasoning. So no, this is starting to brown nicely. So would you say the minimal amount of salt would yes. be probably like a teaspoon? Oh, even less than a teaspoon. Less than a teaspoon. Yeah, okay. even less than a teaspoon. Can, yeah, then everyone can, uh, can season it the way you want. All right, we want this to be really going. All right. Shalom. I hope you're enjoying Cooking with Frenchy, brought to you by the Roth Family JCC, the Jewish Federation of the Desert, and Win Dixie of Fern Park. Back to you, Chef Eric. All right, so no, or aromatics are nice, nice coloring. They're starting to, uh, to melt. We're going to, uh, to reduce the temperature, add the meat, and I'm gonna start toasting my flour. So do you put the flour in there or is no, it separate? Separate. Right now, I'm taking this off the heat for a second and I'm gonna toast my flour. Hop. Oh, over there. Here. Here, let me get you the flour. It's right here. So, where are we? We are here. Okay, so, no, no, yeah, it's this one. So, we're gonna put approximately 60 gram of flour. So 60 gram, that's uh, two ounces of flour. Just dry in the yes, pan? Yes, dry in the pan. And what we want to do is we're going to, to toast the flour. 
toast? To toast it, to toast it dry, the same way you would toast your, um, your spices. And um, you know, sometimes you want to toast your, your spices before you grind them, because it's gonna bring, bring way more flavor to it. This is the exact same principle. You know, it's uh, the flour is gonna become the main thickener for sauce. And at the same time, when you toast it, it's gonna bring also a nice deep color to your uh, to our end sauce. You know, once it be when it's gonna start to uh, to toast and to turn slightly brown, that's when I'm gonna add it to the pot and put that pot back on the fire. Mm -hmm. That sounds pretty easy. It is easy. It just takes you know a little time. No. As you can see, the flower is starting to, uh, to change color. It's very gradual. You want, on that process, you really want to make sure that your stove is on high and that you're always, always, always moving the flower around because you don't want to burn it. If you burn the flower, it's going to completely give a bitter taste to your end product. All right, so look, now our flour from being totally white has taken kind of a nice toasty color. You see, it's browned a little bit, and this is exactly what we want. No, it's fragrant. It has kind of that nutty taste to it. No, we're ready to put it back onto our beef. So I've been very generous. So toasting the flour first exactly. is uh, essential before adding it's essential. it. Essential. Okay. All right. Here, because this is gonna add another layer of flavor to our entire stew. All right, guys, we're already, we're almost there. Two more steps. This is the beef stock that I've made yesterday. And I will show you how to make your own beef stock in a coming episode. So you add the stock. I know you add the wine. It's, I like a lot of wine. So pro approximately half a bottle of wine. If there is more, it's all good, don't worry. It will, it will just test even better. Now, that beef stock that we've put in there, plus the wine, plus the flour, are going to create our sauce. Now I'm gonna reduce the fire. And in two hours, we're gonna be ready to eat. So you're reducing the heat for how long? For two hours. For two hours. You know, and then it depends on your stove, you know. The, um, we might, it might take two and a half hour. It's something that you're gonna check. What we want is, perfect, to have a nice simmer going on and we'll come back, check on the progress every now and then, but as long as you have a low simmer going, you're all good. By the way, is this essential that it would cook for a few hours? Yes. If this is not something you put in a pressure cooker, right? No. no, no. What you can do is, I like to cook it on the stove top. A lot of people will use, um, an heavy Dutch oven, you know, make with, you know, the, the heavy one uh, out of, um, cast you say? Iron. of cast iron mm -hmm. and put it in the stove and put it, uh, sorry, put it in the oven and put it in the oven at 300 degrees for a good three hours. So it's a preference, you know. I like to be here, to be here because I like to be able to watch it, to look at it once in a while. And smell it. 
All right then guys, we'll see you back in two and a half hours. Well, we're back at it. Our beef burgundy is nicely cooking, you know. We're on a very, very low simmer. Everything is thickening. So I'm gonna finish the garnish. We're gonna finish slicing all the mushroom. And, and then we're gonna talk about the side dish. The, uh, the traditional way of serving the beef burgundy is either with um, egg noodles or with, uh, with pasta, like a, taglia, a nice thick pasta like a tagliatelle. I wanted to do something a little bit uh, less heavy, so we're gonna be serving it with a cauliflower puree and a little rice. This way we'll have um, the, uh, the darkness and richness of our beef and the softness and sweetness of the cauliflower. So guys, our garnish is, uh, is ready to go in the pot in a little bit and we're going to start on our, uh, on our side dish. What we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the base Get rid of those. And now, what I like to do is, I'm gonna cut it right in the center. I'm going to collect all the florets. I'm gonna cook them separately. So we don't use the stem at all? We're gonna use the stem. With the stem, we're gonna make our puree. We're gonna make our cauliflower puree. With the florets, we're gonna roast them in the oven. This way, with the same, with the same vegetable, we're gonna have almost two side dish. So no, our florets are ready. I'm going to separate them, season them, and then we'll put them in the oven. The next step will be to hard boil all the cauliflower hearts and make them into a nice little puree. Well, simple seasoning on our florets, salt, pepper, a little garlic powder, a little olive oil, and now we're ready for the oven. Voila. Here we are, Lechaim, and in 10 minutes, we'll take them out. Shalom. I hope your kitchen smells as good as it does here. Mm. Part two of our cauliflower. Now we're gonna get on to our puree. First thing off, I'm waiting for that water to boil. Just a little uh, salt in there, a little olive oil. As soon as that water is boiling, my cauliflower is gonna go in. Let's put the rest of our cauliflower in there. All right, now let's look at our cauliflower. 
And we are ready. All right, now let's finish our puree. So I know this is something that's definitely not French, but I want to bring a little creaminess to, uh, to our cauliflower. No, we're, uh, we're cooking a kosher dish, so I cannot add any uh, cream or uh, any butter. No, that's where the tahina comes. And for someone that doesn't know what tahini means, it means uh, sesame paste. Yeah. It's paste made of sesame, basically. And now, our side are ready. And we'll be ready to plate as soon as our burgundy is done. All right, finally, last step with our beef burgundy, we're gonna add the mushroom. Nothing in particular. Remember, we scallop the mushroom and now we pour them in. Up. Once the mushroom will have cooked for 10 minutes, we'll rectify the seasoning and we'll be ready to serve. Well, finally, we're ready to plate. We have our uh, cauliflower florets, we have our rice, we have our pureed cauliflower, and of course, we have our star, we have our beef burgundy. So let's do this now. Little, little, uh, another little trick right now. Let me show you how to, uh, how to plate rice. What we want to do is we want to make the rice, which is going to be our only carb, the center of the plating. We're going to shape it here we are. We're going to shape the rice And then we're gonna create our plate around it. And here we are. This is our beef burgundy, guys. I hope you had as much fun as I did. And hopefully, I'll see you very soon in another episode of Cooking with Frenchie. And now, let's go serve our host.
This program is brought to you by the Rose Family JCC of Greater Orlando. We also want to thank Barbara and Bert Chasnoff for letting us use the beautiful kitchen. All this amazing food was donated by the Wind Dixie of Fern Park. And please, thanks to all the JCC of Florida, Boca Raton, Fort Lauderdale, North and South Miami Beach, and of course, Tampa. Hi guys, I hope you've enjoyed the show and uh, that I wasn't too boring or, uh, or anything. If you have any questions, um, I'm here and I'm ready to answer. Do you want to unmute the, mute, the mics? No, it's in the chat. Oh. It's supposed to be in the chat. So, let me see. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lisa. I really appreciate it. All right, so a question that, come, that has come multiple times is do I need the leg of the turkey for the fat or can I just use liquid smoke? No, you, you really need the, uh, the turkey leg for, uh, for the fat, especially if you, uh, you use a cut of meat that is really lean, uh, you're going to need, to, to need that, uh, that extra fat. Um, if I could have found any, I would have used maybe some uh, uh, smoked duck it would have brought even more flavor, but those are kind of hard. It's kind of hard to uh, to come by. So yeah, definitely use the uh, use the turkey leg instead of the the liquid smoke, and mainly liquid smoke anyway is just a bunch of chemicals. So stay away from it. All right, let me see what other question do I have. So what kind of meat? Um, Basically, any type of meat that, um, uh, that is for braising. And um, so that could be, you know, uh, a short, short rib, deboned, cut in, a, in two inch square, um, a nice piece of round uh, that you can cut yourself. Um, I'd say you, you might even um, uh, use some, uh, a nice brisket, but uh, for a brisket, you will need to adjust the, the cooking time. You know, brisket would, uh, would give you a, a different consistency, but it, uh, it would definitely work. The only thing is for, uh, for brisket to cook, I would say three and a half hour at least. Um, but you know, any type of uh, beef uh, for braising. All right, what else do we have? Uh, let me see. Uh, guys, don't hesitate. Okay, Yale is asking. All right. Okay, so. Your phone's on. Turn your volume down. My volume is on. Oh, all right. All right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, uh, yes, the, uh, the turkey goes in the... <laughs> The turkeys goes into the all the aromatics. Absolutely, you slice it up, and uh, you start with your onion and, and your carrots and your celery. Then you add your turkey, and uh, you know you stir it. You get you get all that to a nice little um, uh, little melt. You know you will you'll start your. I, I know you guys. I'm sure you know your way already around the around the kitchen and. Um, as soon as it will start, you know, changing color and, uh, and get all nice and, uh, and brown and sweaty, this is when it's ready for the, uh, for the beef. Um, all right, what's the best wine to, uh, to serve with, uh, with the dish? Oh my God, well, of course a burgundy. So, um, you know, any type of burgundy wine will do. I have to say that I'm a really, really huge fan of Volnay. So a nice Volnay would go well. Um, but um, 
yeah, you can find some uh, some really affordable Burgundy wine no, at any um, any wine store. And uh, as long as you stay with a Burgundy wine, you'll be really, really happy. You don't want something that's going to be too full bodied, you know, uh, too heavy uh, because you want to get all your flavor. But a, a nice, uh, you know, as I said, a nice Volnay, um, a nice Oxidures, uh, a nice Côte de Beaune would be, uh, would be perfect. Let me see. Yes, you can buy a turkey leg already smoked from the butcher, absolutely. So, okay to steam the, the cauliflower instead of boiling? Yes, 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 absolutely. You can steam them. And actually steaming them, you know, will, you will not have to, uh, to use a, col a colander. It's a great, great idea, absolutely. And yes, we will put the, the recipe on the website uh, for the next episode prior to, uh, prior to the event. As I said, today was kind of um, having a first baby. We, uh, we tried, we did our best. I just hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I did my best. Again, I was so nervous during the, the first shooting. It was ridiculous. But uh, it's, I'm so glad to have all of you here. Oh, uh, guys, you are too kind. You are too kind. Thank you, Ariel. And, uh, you know, I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. Uh, I know we had a lot of fun doing it. Uh, it, was, uh, it was very stressful at times, but, uh, but having this result, having all of you joining us, it's, um, it's a dream come true. Uh, let me put my glasses back on. I'll